A very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. You are tuned in uh, to URA TV, and we are live from the URA Drift Studio. We thank you so much for joining us from far and wide to be part of our discussion today. We have a very, very interesting topic, uh, which is good for the success of Africa, which is good for the development. Clearly, if we keep doing things the same, we cannot expect different results. So today we are going to talk about the African continental free trade area. This is a stage of economic integration where states come together to remove uh, non-tariff barriers to promote uh, the exchange of trade amidst uh, the countries. Uganda has made a number of steps. We have uh, engaged in a number of uh, regional blocks, talk about the East African community, the common market for East and Southern Africa, that's COMESA, and also the Intergovernmental Authority on Development, which is known as IGAD. We are part of all those regional blocks, and uh, we have had uh, positive results. We have had benefits from them. We have had challenges. It is never a smooth ride at the end of the day. Today, we are joined by Henry Kualigonza Bienkia. He is a supervisor in, uh, in trade. He's a supervisor for international affairs, uh, the section in URA, the section in customs, that oversees our engagements with other parties, for example, the regional blocks. And Henry is here to break down for us what is this African continental free trade area? Where has it come from? What are its objectives? What do we hope to get from this arrangement? What is in it for me? What is in it for you? Uh, we are going to see how far it has come and where we are going. Henry, you are very welcome to this show. Uh, I'm sure the masses out there are eager to hear from you and get to know, get to shed some more light about this African continental free trade area. Over to you, Henry. Thank you, Anthony. Good morning, uh, viewers out there. I think I'm glad to be here to participate in this discussion about what we have now come to call the new kid on the block. Like you have said, we have been in various efforts of economic integration, and we have now the latest to our addition is the African CFTA. I'll in due course be referring it to that just to shorten. I'm going to take you through what we mean by this and we shall also engage on the prospects. We shall look at how far have we gone in the implementation of the African continental free trade area as a country and as a regional block and uh, we shall crown it with a, a special focus on the customs role. Sure. What are we supposed to do or what are we expected to do in the furtherance of this free trade area? We can we can proceed. When, when, when we talk about African continental free trade area, like Anthony pointed out, two things must come into your mind which are supposed to underscore the meaning. And these are that it's a free trade area. And when we talk about a free trade area, we basically mean that we shall have a few, especially during the process of integration, or no barriers to trade. And of course, that is always the focus, that is the vision. That's what we attain at the highest stage of economic integration. This in, in the form of tariffs and also quotas. So in our perspective of the African continent, we are looking at a few or no barriers to, to trade and quotas among African countries. You cannot talk about the African continental free trade area without talking about the AU. 
this is an effort, this is given birth from the African Union efforts. And it's one of the flagship projects of the African Union. African Union has a vision, 2063, and among us, the projects that they are executing is economic integration. In the first pursuit of that vision, they listed a 10-year implementation plan of what they called the AU's flagship programs, what is supposed to catapult us into that African dream. And the African continent of free trade area is among them. I will cast for you our dream in the 10-year program is that we should have an integrated high-speed train network, an African virtual e university, an African commodity strategy, an an African forum, and number five is the continent of free trade area, which is the, our subject of discussion today. We, we also anticipate that we shall have a single African airspace, an African passport, just like we have now an East African passport, and, 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 and the rest. So that's why we are saying that if you want to understand the African CFTA, you need to look at it in the context of the grand scheme of our agenda as Africa, Agenda 2063, which, is, which of course was drawn to help achieve the vision of an integrated, prosperous, and peaceful Africa, which is driven by its citizens and representing an economic, um, representing a dynamic, force in international arena. So you, you look at the CFT uh, in, 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 in the context of positioning Africa as a global economic force. Agenda 20 to 2063 has basically seven elements. And I would like to draw attention to only three of them, which seem to be directly furthering the African continent of free trade area. And number one is a achieving a prosperous Africa based on inclusive growth and sustainable development. So we should look at the CFTA as an effort that is intending to enable us achieve an inclusive growth, growth among our citizens. The other one is uh, achieving an Africa where development is people driven. People driven, it means people must be involved. And part of the involvement that is required is the involvement in trade. Unleash it, to unleash the potential of our women and youth. You, 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 I, I would want to refocus in due course what are women, how are women going to benefit from this continent of free trade area? And, 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 and also the youth. You, you'll actually note that most of the women are involved in informal trade, and, and the CFTA is coming in to actually further initiatives that is supposed to, to make them more participating, to empower them, to make them engaged in formal trade. Lastly, to make Africa strong, united, influential, and an influential global player and partner. Right now, the global leaders are actually the economic giants. We are all aware that USA and China, on one hand, are leading because they have the biggest economies in the world. So we hope to also attain that, and I think that is part of the African dream that I want us to focus in. So would ask yourself, why a continental free trade area in Africa? I will begin by directing your, your focus to Africa's fact file. We, we need to appreciate where are we so that we know whether this is the deal or not. Our population size at the commencement of this continent of free trade area was 1.2 billion. The latest est estimates of this month, March 2021, has put our population as Africa to 1.3, from 1.2, meaning there is already an increase before even a full rollout of the CFTA. This population is equivalent to 16.72 of the total population, world population, and that is not a mean thing. We are rich in resources, but actually we are less industrialized. If you go into 
a count of the precious minerals where we would do draw a lot of incomes and resources, Africa actually has 40% of the gold reserves. It has 60% of cobalt. It has 90% of platinum reserves. But we are still rich. We are, we are still poor. Actually, the poorest continent in the world. So you'd ask yourself, where is the problem and where is the solution? So the continent of free trade area is coming in as a solution to this, to boost the African lives, the African economy. Many countries in Africa actually have a population of less than 20 million. Uganda, we are lucky, we are around 40, 48, 42. But most countries are having, a, they, they, they have a low population, a population that is less than 20 million. And that means that their market potential is low. So what are they looking for in the African free continental area is market. Our intra-Africa trade, trade among African countries, is rated lowest at 16 to 17 percent. Compare it to North Africa, North America, which is rated at 40 percent. Trade among us North American countries, Canada and USA and the rest. Trade among us countries in Western Europe are rated, is rated at 63. Ours is rated between 16 to, to, to 17. Trade among us, the Asian, is rated at 30%. So what are we looking for in the continental free trade area? Is trade among us African what? Among us African countries. I told you, I, I already said that Africa is one of the poorest continent. We contribute only 3.3 trillion, which accounts for actually 2.4% of the global GDP. That is too small. So how do we boost our potential and increase our share on a global scale? We have to trade among us ourselves. We have to widen the African market. We have to pull down trade barriers. And this is what the continental free trade area is all about. And therefore, the rationale for this coordinate of free trade area is actually using trade as a powerful tool to boost our economies. And I'm talking about the African economy in order to tackle the problem of poverty. The CEFTA will put in place mechanisms to address a number of non-tariff challenges that frustrate intra-regional trade. And we hope that actually that will increase on the certain and predictability in doing business. And if business is facilitated, it means the net effect is that income will draw into everyone's pocket. So, we are looking for the free trade area to provide a larger integrated market that we have said. And, and the president has already said, if you have a larger market, it will attract investors. And I think he's on point on that. We shall have new investment. No one wants to invest where they are not sure of a market. You can't invest in a business not knowing and not sure of where you will sell the product. So by opening up borders, pulling down barriers, we're actually attracting investors. Investment comes with the new technologies, and of course, the new technologies come with employment. And the net effect is you grow richer, both individually and as a country. So the African continent of free trade area is coming in to increase trade among us, our countries, so that we achieve industrial development, better infrastructure connectivity, improve our economies of scale, and also enhance competitiveness. What are the general objectives like I hinted on from the beginning? We are looking at this to create a single market for our goods and services. And of course that means that we must have free movement of persons across the, the, the African continent. And that's why in the Vision 2063, they are looking at having an African passport. All that is to further movement of people, including those that are involved in trade. We hope to build on the initiatives and developments 
at state parties. You, you, you'll actually uh, note that we, as East Africa, we are negotiating into the CFTA as a bloc, not as Uganda. And, and we shall also know that Uganda has already signed and ratified the agreement. And since it entered into force, into force, I, I think uh, upon the, 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 the depositing of the 22nd ratification, so it is, the agreement is binding on Uganda. The principles, we need to look at the principles. What are the principles that are governing the negotiating? We, the, 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 these include, among others, flexibility, spatial and, dif and differential uh, treatment, transparency. African countries must disclose information, uh, substantial liberalization, the most favored nation treatment. It means that African countries should treat member states as most favored in their policies compared to their relations with other non-party or third-party states. Reciprocity, uh, the, the other one is that decisions must be taken by consensus. You know consensus building always uh, uh, outputs sustainable engagements and trade relations are maintained only through consensus. Even where you have disputes, the spirit is that we should iron out the disputes through consensus. And also there is an emphasis on adoption of best practices that are implemented in state parties and also in uh, regional economic uh, communities like the ESC, like SADAC, like uh, COMESA. Um, just a brief glance about the structure. On top we have the highest decision making body which is the, head, the heads of state and, and, ac and actually this one includes even heads of states of those who have not yet ratified. We have two issues here, ratification and uh, signing. Signing, those are states which have actually accepted to, to, to be bound by the, by, by, by the agreement and they have signed. But, they, but, but those who have gone uh, a step to ratify, ratify is that you have approved and, in, and uh, you have approved to incorporate it under your national laws and uh, in, in Uganda's case, it will, be, it will even be um, presented to parliament and uh, they will ratify, they, they, will, they will give their consent. That, 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 that will constitute ratification. Now, ratification, it means you have now accepted to be bound by all the protocols, all the laws. It is the latest stage of acceptance to be bound by the agreement. Then we have a council of ministers, and here they focus on the ministers of trade. They, they, they are the ones who convene, and also there is an inclusion of other appointees by state parties, those who have ratified. And then we have a committee of uh, senior trade officials, and, 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 and those are the permanent secretaries of these, of, of these ministries. At the lowest group, we have the technical working groups, Yeah, now I, I, I would like to take you through the, the, the critical milestones that we have achieved so far regarding to the implementation of the African Continental Free Trade Area. And, and the first one occurred on the 15th of, of June 2015 in Johannesburg. The, the agreement, the, 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 the Continental Free Trade Area negotiations were launched. And immediately in May uh, 2016, there was an adoption of the 12 negotiating principles that we have talked about. And then in 2017, there was an agreement to liberalize 90% of the products at the sixth negotiation, negotiating forum. In December 2017, there was an agreement of uh, the African Continental of Free Trade Area, Text and Protocol Services. And the, the, the other critical milestone occurred on 21st of March 2018 in Chigali, where the agreement was signed at the 10th Extraordinary Summit of the African Union Assembly. And on the 30th of May 2019, the agreement entered into force, like we earlier said, 
when 30 days um, 30 days after the deposit of the uh, of the 22nd instrument of ratification as specified under article 23 of the agreement on July 7, July 7th 2019 in Niger the operation uh, the operationalization phase was launched and then uh, lately early, early this year on 1st January 2021 um, in principle, the heads of state agreed to commence trading, and and and, and uh, we are happy to report that the first consignment was actually dispatched from Ghana, uh, destination South Africa. So the activities that are ongoing, countries are still depositing instruments of ratification of the agreement. Uh, the trade in goods and uh, trade in services mm -hmm. are still being negotiated, negotiated uh, and, and I think this includes the, the, the issues of tariff concessions, some aspects of rules of origin, and uh, some schedules of specific commitments for services. Uh, each state party that is finalizing submits their country tariff offers, and I think as ESC, we, as, as Uganda already submitted theirs, together uh, to, to the ESC, which submitted the regional offer, I think in December last year. And, and I think that underscores the stage at which we are and the seriousness to which we are taking this agreement. <coughs> Phase two, negotiations are ongoing, and these are covering investment, competition policy, and intellectual property rights. And, 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 and on, at an operational level, there are also discussions that are going to agree on what customs is supposed to, to do to ensure effective implementation of the, of, of the CFTA. Just as an update, 55 out of, rather 54 out of 55 African Union member states have already signed the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement. And uh, 31 of those, of the 54, have already ratified. And uh, we have one outlier who is actually not interested by reason that he has not yet signed and, 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 therefore, and also not ratified, and that, that, that is Ethiopia. Mm, just a glance of who has uh, ratified. We have Algeria, Angola, Burkina Faso, uh, Cameroon, Chad, DRC. I think now I, will, I should take you to Uganda. Uganda is among those and uh, Rwanda in the ESC. Uh, Tanzania is yet to, to, to ratify and, and Burundi and Southern Sudan. And we hope that they will do so soon. As we said, who is a member state? A member state, a member, member states are those who have uh, signed the agreement. In other words, the 50, the 54, and then the state parties are those who have uh, gone a step further to ratify, and those are the 31, including Uganda and Rwanda in East Africa. What are the prospects of this continent of free trade area? Like we, talk, we, we said in the beginning, Africa has a huge market potential. Currently, the latest figures of March issued by UN have put us at 1.3 from 1.2 billion people, and that is a huge market potential. Uh, we hope that uh, this will actually transform ours to be the world is largest free the, the, the world is largest free trade area since the formation of the WTO. And uh, like we have seen, Africa is actually a dynamic market. At the inception of the agreement, we were rated at 1.2. The latest ratings are putting us at 1.3. And the projections by 2050 are putting us at uh, 2.5 billion, meaning that we shall have a huge market potential. Um, a, a, a quick run through um, um, of, of, the, of the coverage. We have said that the agreement covers the protocol on trade in goods that will be discussed in the course, the protocol on trade in services, the protocol on dispute 
settlement and also the others that relate to intellectual property rights, investment, and competition policies. Uh, I would like to address, to, to direct your attention to the rules of origin under the AFT, the African Continental Free Trade Area, um, or maybe to underscore what rules of origin are to our audience out there. These are a set of criteria that are needed to determine the national source of a product. Uh, their importance is that they determine the qualification of goods for preferential treatment. That is, if import tariffs should be charged among us goods that are originating from, 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 from countries that are part of the free trade area. Article 13 of the protocol on trade on, in, in goods provides for the rules of origin and uh, it specifically states that goods shall be eligible for preferential treatment under uh, the protocol if they are originating in any of the partner states in accordance with the criteria and the conditions set out within, within the agreement and the protocol. Um, they are provided for under Annex 2 of the Trade in Goods Protocol. And specifically, what this means is that the African continent of free trade area rules of origin will determine if it, it, they, 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 they actually define the criteria that must be met for a specific product to be considered as originating in an exporting country within our continental free trade area and therefore must qualify for preferential treatment. Their implementation and uh, the transparency provisions are meant to be reviewed annually by the Committee on the Rules of Origin which is supposed to submit a report and recommendations to the Committee of Senior Trade Officials. These rules of origin uh, normally talk about an origin criteria that highlights basically two basic criterions. And the first one is that goods must be wholly obtained from within, they should be wholly obtained or originating. Sorry, the, the, the first one, that the product to be considered as originating from a state party, it must be wholly obtained or wholly produced from within the African continent, if I should basically say so. And of course, this should conform with the requirements of the, 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 the law or, or within the, the meaning of Article 5 of the Annex of the trade in goods. The, the, the second one is that if a product is to be regarded as originating from the African continent, if I if I'm to say, to, 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 to say so, it must have undergone a substantial transformation in a territory of a state party. And, and, and once those two criterions are met, we can we, we, we shall be able to regard the subject item as originating and once we regard it as originating it means they will enjoy preferential treatment and and, and and where tariffs are removed it means those items will be cleared with no tariffs uh, basically that's about the the, 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 the rules of origin uh, there is also a provision on customs cooperation and mutual administrative assistance. Like you remember, we talked about the principles that there must be the principle about disclosure, free information, disclosure of information, and, and and also cooperation. We are expected to cooperate, and the, the ways that we are supposed to cooperate as African countries include exchange of information, cooperating in the preventation, in, in, in the prevention, investigation, and suppression of customs offenses, surveillance of operations, uh, controlling borders, and uh, sharing resources. I think this will come at the highest, the, the, the highest level. Um, the agreement also talks about trade facilitation and uh, this 
seeks to operationalize some elements of best practices of international instruments like the Revised Kyoto Convention, the WTO Trade Facilitation Agreement. Basically, this, will, this focuses on simplifying and harmonizing international trade, making it easy for our people to engage in business and in trade um, uh, acro across the African continent. Um, some of the, 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 the measures, the trade facilitation measures that are emphasized, the publication of laws, people must be able to, to have access to the laws that govern the, the, the free trade area, uh, implementing adverse rulings so that people are guided before they engage, or they are guided on tax matters before they engage in, 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 in the trade, electronic payment so that they ease uh, the, the transaction of business, um, risk management, post clearance audit, publication of average clearance time. Uh, uh, clear time releases are always is always an instrument to gauge how far we have gone in, 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 in as far as ease of business. They, they always measure. We always measure how long does it take for someone, for example, to clear through customs so that they can access the market. Uh, the other aspect is the uh, emphasis on expedited shipments. People shouldn't be delayed in, in, in customs and uh, in, in doing business and also in, 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 in clearance with other trade, in other government regulated, with other government or regulatory authorities. How do you manage perishables? We know that they have a life and a timeline. People shouldn't be delayed. They should access the market very soon and as quick as possible and then the use of IT to ease the way we do our business. There is also a provision that handles non-tariff barriers and uh, like, like, like we said we, the, the agreement seeks to create a single market and creation of a single market also hinges on identification of uh, of, of, of non-tariff barriers, categorize them, report them, and uh, institute mechanisms to actually eliminate them. And the, the African continent of free trade area will also cover such issues. There is also an aspect of uh, transit uh, that basically focuses on how do we further facilitate trade by ensuring faster movement of goods and reduction of costs so that people are cleared without, uh, they clear their cargo without delays, reduction of formalities that are engaged in, 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 in customs clearance, clearance with the other trade regulatory authorities, uh, making approval of these means of transport easy, licensing them to do business in real time, and uh, also ensuring that a regional bond is in place to ensure security <coughs> of cargo in transit. And also documenting, of course, these procedures so that they are, they are made known to the people who are engaged in business. Many people have been asking what happens to existing blocks and uh, like, for example, ESC, when we roll out the, uh, when, when we roll out the African continental free trade area, and the answer is that they will continue, they will be maintained in the short run because they are looked at as the building blocks. They will offer an institutional, they, 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 they will contribute to the institutional structure of the African continental free trade area through co coordinating and implementing the same at a regional level. They, they, are, all there. they are also earmarked for offering advisory services uh, through their respective seats at the committees of senior trade officials and also. And, and, and also uh, uh, during the meetings of the subcommittees and the committees. But in the long run, it is expected that uh, this, will be this will be incorporated into the, 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 the broader perspective. In line with the 18th ordinary session of the Assembly of African Union leaders, which called for consolidation of uh, the trapezoid and other regional free trade areas into a continental free trade area, but this will be, it, it will take time. The other aspect that also comes in is how will SMEs benefit from this agreement? 
Um, and, and for us to better construe that, we need to, to take note that small medium enterprises account for around 80% of Africa's businesses, and that is no mean contribution to our economies. And they, what we also note is that in spite of contributing or accounting for such a big percentage, they usually struggle to penetrate more markets. You'll find a small business person has made, as, as, uh, is, is, is encountering challenges to, to penetrate, say, the DRC market. So we hope with the pulling down trade barriers under the African CFTA, they will be able to access the African market as a whole. And, and of course, that means they will also access inputs and we shall also see growth in industrialization and possibly they will also grow from being small medium enterprises to, to, to actually bigger industries and that is our vision and our prayer. Uh, the, the other aspect that is also coming through is how women, how, how, how are women going to benefit from the CFTA and uh, for us to also construe that, we need to look at a brief fact profile, especially for Africa, that women constitute 70% of the informal cross-border traders. And, uh, and, 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 and their businesses actually struggle to also penetrate the market. Women are always involved in a lot of activity, trade, trade activity, but on the other hand, we also note that uh, they are always vulnerable and prone to a lot of harassment, a lot of violence, confiscation of goods, and uh, sometimes at the highest level, imprisonment, and all these are trade barriers. So under the African CFTA, we hope that reduction of tariffs will make it more affordable for informal traders, including women and the youth, to operate through the formal channels. Remember, under the Agenda 2063, we are talking about empowering women specifically and the youth, and we think removal of trade barriers like tariffs is, is geared towards the achievement of this. And we know that this can also be furthered by simplification of uh, the trade clearance regimes. Of course, noting that most women are engaged in small trade. So the other question is, uh, and, 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 and uh, the, the, this is often asked, is that when you are in a relationship with other countries, just like when you are in a relationship at an individual level, sometimes things might not go well. What would you do? So under the African continental free trade area, in case of disputes among countries, there is a framework that we hope to resolve. But of course, access to that framework will only be to those who are state parties, like we said, those who have ratified. However, uh, within the same provision, private parties can only be protected if a state party is able to show that the rights have been violated. And, 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 and the state party actually brings such a claim. So in the, in the, in the, discipline, in, in, in the same framework, there is emphasis on consultation, uh, emphasis of not applying the principle of reciprocity in, in a negative sense, that if I am hurt by this country, then I should also hurt you back. But actually, the, 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 the emphasis of consultation, in case of a dispute, it's, it's advised that countries should engage so that they find a, an amicable resolution. And the, 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 the most tools that are, the, that are advised are conciliation, mediation, and, and, and that the information that is involved in those dispute settlement proceedings should be held confidential. Where state parties I have not agreed through those uh, channels. They are also advised to revert to arbitration. So lastly, uh, I, I wish to underscore the role of customs in the implementation of 
of the African continental free trade area. There are several aspects that have been earmarked where customs can make the, where customs can make due contribution so that we further the implementation of the agreement. And one of them is the, 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 is, is, is the area of enhancing cooperation among customs administrations in state parties. And, and under this, we are actually expected and required to identify areas where we can enter into memorandums of understanding and mutual arrangements of mutual administrative assistance, reach out our counterpart customs administrations, <coughs> so that we should we 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 we, we further relationships our, our our trade relations under that window. We also required to designate, and I think we have already done this, contact points that will enable uh, the sharing of information. Remember, in the prince, uh, the one of the principles that was uh, that that is offered in the agreement is that we should disclose information, and 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 and, and if you want to disclose information, then you streamline the channels. So customs is required to actually get a contact person that can be able to share customs-related information, trade-related information, so that it can be accessed by whoever wants it at a uh, continental level. Then participation in annual meetings of AU subcommittees of director generals, and I think our commissioner customs is doing this, and there are many more engagements that he will take part in. The other one is uh, um, participation in drafting of AU trade facilitation strategy. We are required to come up with the with the continental trade facilitation strategy, then later a regional trade facilitation strategy, and, uh, and 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 I think that will cascade also to 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 a national and organisational level. And customs is expected to take part in that. Um, customs administrations are also required to update their tariff rates so that we align them to the African Continental Free Trade Area schedules. And, and I think the suggested date for this is around June 2021. Um, we are also required to develop capacity building uh, programs and implement them um, in identified areas to enable proper implementation of this. And I think this engagement is intended to further this. Um, the, the other one is the aligning our customs documentation to facilitate trade. And uh, in our perspective as, the, as URA, as customs, we shall update our, our customs management system, our tax clearance systems, our national single window platform, so that we are able to facilitate but for, for, for instance, by issuing uh, continental certificates of origin, which would enable originating items to qualify for preferential treatment. Um, as an organization, of course, we shall uh, arrange and procure manuals for these certificates of origin to, so that people can be accessed, can access them free of charge and uh, also update our system to to cater for the goods that are cleared under preferential treatment, and also to ring to ring to ring, to ring fence possible the same from possible abuse. Mm, the other one is in the area of simplification and harmonisation of customs laws and procedures. And uh, here we have done so far a tremendous a tremendous job. We have uh, we are required to use a common external tariff. Uh, and the common sta and common statistical units, and and, and 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 just in line with this, we Uganda and the ESC we already use the HSC version of 2017. We are also required to use the harmonized evaluation system, and also I'm happy to also inform that Uganda and ESC are implementing the WTO agreement on customs evaluation, which is a standard agreement that is intended to achieve the harmonization of our valuation systems. We also require to implement the standards and procedures provided for in the revised Choto Convention. Uganda also ratified the same long time ago and its provisions are actually incorporated into our regional laws, our national laws and also 
uh, into our trade facilitation interventions at uh, an organizational level. So we are also supposed to, impl to implement simplified trade procedures, and this includes identifying and cataloging processes and the procedures that require improvement. R right now, uh, you, you will note that we are working on most of on, 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 on several on several initiatives which are in line with this. Notable of them is that very soon we shall be automating the exemption regime so that uh, the clearance time is reduced, so that predictability is enhanced. We, are, we shall also roll out the advanced ruling module which will enable to furnish trade information, technical information to guide people in doing business. Uh, we, 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 we have also implemented initiatives that hinge on simplification of, 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 of clearance of small cargo at the border. You know that we have regimes that govern export, small exports and small imports, um, which has actually uh, made the, the, the cost of doing business in that area low and also has enabled people to clear faster than it was before and uh, also has helped us register tremendous achievements as regards to formalizing informal business and also expanding and therefore expanding our tax base. Uh, custom is also required to publish customs laws and requirements. At a national level, the Ministry of Trade has developed a, a trade information portal where such laws are published. And in addition, URA and the ESC, we also have our own websites that supports the, the, the national portal. We always uh, disseminate uh, relevant legislation and we hope we shall use this also to, to disseminate after information. Customs is required to implement the agreed trade facilitation measures uh, within the continental free trade framework and also develop capacity building activities like, like, like we said. Yeah. Of course, as, as, as I wind up so that our, my brother from the ministry has been uh, well engaged in this process in the negotiation comes in, I wish to highlight that we have a few challenges and notable of them is that uh, individual states, some of them still face difficult choices. And I think we can note that this could be the reason why some countries even within the ESC are lagging their feet, they haven't ratified. And we hope that uh, in due course, we can be able to demonstrate to them the benefits so that they can fall suit. For also LDCs, including Uganda, the matter of tariff concessions is quite a sensitive one. And, and, and I think this, you will also look at it when my brother discusses the tariff offers, because this will actually guide what will remain subject to, 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 not to import duty and what will be remained and, and what will be put under, under weaver. Yeah, so I think for now I can Thank you very much, Henry Kuali Gonza. Uh, that has been quite uh, detailed and very clear about uh, the African continental free trade area. I have uh, picked, uh, picked a few points uh, from here and that uh, we have a market in Africa of 1.3 billion people. I mean, there is a lot at stake and to see that our intra-regional trade is about 12 to 16%, we ask ourselves who is uh, supplying us uh, all that we need. We realize that we are not doing much to trade amongst ourselves. Then you would ask yourself, what is the challenge? We probably do not do enough value addition, and we have seen that for items to qualify to be, uh, say, Ugandan, we need enough value addition. If uh, you imported a car from Japan and painted it black, it does not mean that it is a Ugandan car. So what does that mean? We need to do value addition uh, in what we are doing. We have also seen that there is a, a provision for dispute resolution. It is clear that uh, we cannot survive without dispute, but there is always a way. 
and the African continental free trade area has provided uh, avenues for dispute uh, resolution. And we also see uh, cooperation among administrations as a key point that is needed for the success. So uh, we are asking ourselves, you and me, what, uh, where do we come in? Where is the opportunity uh, once it is, um, uh, once the African continental free trade area has grown? Where do you come in? Are we going to be left behind? Maybe not. Now that we know the opportunities that lie ahead, uh, it will be uh, upon us to prepare and be part of this. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we have been joined by Dr. Walakira Godfrey from the Ministry of Trade, Industry and Cooperatives, that is MTIC, or the Ministry of Trade, and he's going to give us some insights about the offers that are available for us uh, in this arrangement and the developments at the high level that we should uh, look out for. What should we be eager to see, Godfrey? You are very welcome. Thank you. I mean to continue. Yes. Um, we also remind you that if you have any input to this conversation, if you have any input to this discussion, feel free to drop it in our chat and we'll be able to, to respond and read it out to the other participants. Also, uh, I learned that there's a, a time the presentation was hazy, uh, but be sure that we are going to share the presentation to your email addresses as long as you share them with us. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, you will join me and we welcome uh, Dr. Godfrey to give us the input, his submission from the Ministry of Trade. Godfrey, you're welcome. Yes. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I would thank Uganda Revenue Authority for this fundamental awareness to our stakeholders. As you have heard, my colleague who has been presenting, he has presented a number of issues. And I think some of the issues I was supposed to talk about, I'm not going to talk about them. But what I'm going to focus on in terms of where are we as Uganda, where are we in terms of the CFTA, and what, and what do we expect from the CFTA itself? As my colleague was saying, Henry, the start of trading started on 1st January 2021. Now the question people have been asking normally, what does it imply when they say start of trading on 1st January? So start of trading based within the understanding of the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement, it is assumed countries have started trading. And in terms of trading, as for Uganda, Uganda in our negotiations under the CFTA, we negotiated as a block under ESC. And our market access offer for goods that was prepared was based in terms of the understanding of the existing common external tariff. And in terms of the bigger picture of the CFTA, one of the principles of the CFTA agreement, it builds on what we call the key, which means it builds on the existing RECs. And within the CFT agreement, there are eight recognized RECs. And within the RECs, we have the customs unions, which are mainly ESC and ECOWAS. The rest are not customs union, as I'm going to talk. We have IGAT, that is the third one. We have COMESA, we have SADAC, then we have SEMAC, ECAS, and MAGREB. MAGREB, that is that is mainly for the Arab countries, Algeria, Tunisia, Morocco. ECOWAS has 15 member states. ECAS, that is the one for starting from, ECAS will take it from the one where DRC is. You go to the side of Congo, Brazzaville, Cameroon, that belt, then Central African Republic. Then CEMAC, that is part of the, it is called the Central Economic Monetary Union. It is mainly for the French speakers. So within the agreement, 
when you look at it in terms of the existing wrecks, we have already the ones which are already at an advanced stage, like the way you see the ESC Customs Union. And within the SADC itself, SADC also has one customs union, which is South African Customs Union of five member states. So within the market access offer, based on the principles and the modalities, I think my colleague talked about them, the modalities specify in terms of what are we supposed to offer. So they categorize three types of goods. We have category A, that is the 90%, which is supposed to be liberalized upon entry into force of the agreement. Then you have category B, which is sensitive. Then category C, which is supposed to be excluded from the agreement. Now in terms of category A, if you are to take in terms of the ESC customs nomenclature, since customs officers are here, you will find within the customs union we have around like 5,465 tariff lines. And of those take 90%. So the 90%, those are supposed to be the ones which are supposed to be categorized under category A. That is for immediate liberalization. But within the CFTA, I don't know whether my colleague mentioned in terms of the status where we are, there was an understanding which was given by the ministers of trade that in terms of liberalizing, trade is supposed to be accompanied by the rules of origin. Now the question would, people would ask, where are we in terms of the rules of origin? Rules of origin will never, will never finish. It's just like a moving target. But in terms of the CFTA, under the rules of origin, so far what has been agreed, it is around 80%. So the 80%, and you compare it to, in terms of category A, which is 90%, brings in a contradiction. So member states and partner states, some of them said no. Why don't we liberalize best on the agreed rules of origin, which is 80%? So within the agreed rules of origin of 80%, you find the ESC offer that we have offered under category A stands within the agreed rules of origin, which is ap approximately 80%. So the 80% under the modalities, it specifies it the CFT agreement categorizes the African states into two. We have the LDCs, the least developed countries, and the developing countries. I'll bring it to the nearest of our ESC. Within ESC, as per the UN, it is assumed it is only Kenya that is developing. So the rest are LDCs. Despite Tanzania, the last year, declaring it is now middle income. But in terms of within the ESC, so we have five with one exception, which is, uh, which is developing, which is Kenya. Now, when you go to SACO, which is negotiating as a customs union, SACO of the five member states, South Africa, Namibia, Swaziland, Lesotho, and Iswatini, the five are developing countries, with, only, with an exception of one member country. So you look at it in terms of the dynamics of offering. So we have the ESC with one customs, with one developing country saying, within the modalities, developing countries are supposed to liberalize for a shorter period. If it is category A, they're supposed to liberalize within five years. LDCs are supposed to take a 10 year period for category A. So within the ESC customs union, under the understanding, among our member states as ESC, we have agreed ESC to be categorized as LDC. So that gives the benefit of Kenya for a longer transition period of liberalizing, which gives it a 10-year period under the category A, the 90%. Now, when you go to SAC, which is also similarly like Kenya, so you find Kenya and SAC, SAC will be liberalizing in a short period for category A, which is 90% in five years. So you find those are the dynamics. Now, when you go to ECOWAS, ECOWAS with 15 member states, it has around like four developing countries. That is Nigeria, Ghana, Ivory Coast, they're mainly four. So you find these are now the arguments people are bringing. If ESC takes itself as an LDC, can we allow ECOWAS also to be an LDC to take a bigger period? 
So those are still debates. So in terms of the market access offer for goods, as ESC and Uganda, we have so far prepared the 90, the category A, which we have submitted to the African Union. Now category B and category C, that is the sensitive and excluded items, on the guidance by the extraordinary summit, it was decided by end of June 2021, you must have finalized category B and category C. So in terms of the market access for, for goods, what I would say, there are 41 member states, 41 partner states of AU that have submitted category A offers at the AU. Now within the 41, we have the ESC as a customs union, we have ECOWAS as a customs union, we have SACU as a customs union. So when you count those, you'll have an, um, an average number of around like 25. Then you go to the individual countries like Namibia, no, Madagascar, Zambia, Mauritius, Egypt. Even though Egypt is in Comesa, you find, so those are the ones that make now so far the 41. An addition to what my colleague said in terms of the ratification, my colleague had hinted that ratification so far is 31. As by end of December, the ratification so far we have 35 member states, which make them the partner states. Now in terms of the trade in services, the agreement and the understanding of African Union, we agreed on five priority sectors. That is business services, communication, tourism, financial, and transport. So the agreement under trade in services, so it is going to rotate among these five priority sectors. And in terms of the progress in services so far, member states are still preparing the equivalent, what we call tariff offers in services. In services, we call it schedules of commitments where member states offer where they're supposed to open up in terms of the trade in services. And in terms of progress in services, services has moved not the way we expected. And in terms of the member states that have submitted offers, they, are, they, are, they don't exceed more than 15 member states. I think the rest that, that's what I can give for now in terms of the progress and where we are. The rest can be complemented via when you ask questions and answers. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Godfrey. That has been uh, indeed uh, a rich update about the progress uh, that we are having as far as the African continental free trade area is concerned. Uh, now, uh, Dr. Godfrey, we have uh, membership with IGAD, with the East African community, with COMESA, and each of those having its own conditions or terms of reference, so to say. Now, we are headed to the continental free trade area. How easy is it to harmonize all these communities? And at the end of the day, does one for example, the free trade area, does it uh, supersede the other arrangements that we have with the other com uh, member states in the other communities? How is it easy or even possible to strike a balance between what is required from each and every one of these uh, communities? Yeah, thank you, Tashova. Anthony. Anthony. Yeah, thank you, Anthony. In terms of the question you are asking, I'll take it from the, I'll begin from the point what we call the Lagos Action Plan. I think my colleague talked about it or the Abuja Treaty. So when the Lagos, when the African leaders met in Lagos in 1978, 81, in that first period, 82, they have the bigger picture of having one customs union as Africa. So the bigger picture of African leaders is to have one market within the Africa. 
But in terms of the vision of African leaders, so you find the vision is there. So member states within Africa agreed and they started running. So in terms of running, this, the pace, the way they were running, that's when we had now the what we call these new regional economic communities coming in. So you have the ESC, which started around 1995. You have the ECOWAS, which comes also in the same point. Then COMESA, ESC was there before it collapsed in 78, but COMESA has been in existence from 1994 up to now. So in terms of convergence and symmetry and understanding, if you are to use IGAT, right now the way you know IGAT is more of, it is more of a political and drought. So it doesn't focus, if you, it doesn't have any market access offer for now as IGAT. It is more of a developmental aspect. So you find within the IGAD member states, in terms of goods and market access offers, there, is, there hasn't been any progress under IGAT. So when you come to COMESA, COMESA of the COMESA member states, they are those who are within the FTA and the non-FTA member states. So within COMESA right now, we have over 15 FTA member states and Uganda is one of them. So now you come to ES, which is a customs union. So within the understanding of regional integration, you have a lower phase of FTA, COMESA, and the customs union, ESC. So in terms of asymmetry and convergence, as you understand, COMESA doesn't have a common external tariff. So you find the only existing common external tariff is within the ESC. So you find as we negotiate as ESC, apart from having an FTA with the COMESA, there wouldn't be any divergence in terms of the market access offers. So you find as ESC, as we gave, we gave in terms of the existing common external tariff, which you understand if you follow, it has over 64 tariff lines that are sensitive. So that was the basis of our market access offer under the CFTA. So in terms of convergence and divergence eh, and overlapping membership, I would say within ESC and Commerce and IGAT, they will be minimal. But the only challenge that comes in, when you have Commerce under FTA, you are saying goods are supposed to circulate freely within the Commerce member states. And now you come to ESC, you are saying goods are supposed to circulate freely within the ESC, but following the ESC nomenclature. And the ESC nomenclature, you'll have a sensitive list. Comesa, as per the Comesa Treaty, it doesn't state the sensitive list. So you find as Uganda, right now as you understand, Uganda implementing the two. We have the ESC Customs Union and the Comesa. So in terms of overlap, I would say it is minimal. So one builds on the other. And if you go within the ESC member states out of the six, it is only one that is not a member of COMESA. So the rest are members of COMESA. That is Tanzania, which is a SADAC member state. Thank you, Anthony. Yeah, thank you for that, Godfrey. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any input uh, as to the discussion that is going on, uh, please feel free to drop it in our chat and we'll be happy to uh, take it from there. We have seen uh, old regional economic blocks like uh, the European Union. It has come a long way. It took a lot of political will and, and support from the people and the administrations to be able to come to the state where it is at. But that notwithstanding, we have seen some countries uh, leave the European Union. How ready are we to deal with such challenges? And anyway, what is it that causes the discomfort for some of the member states to, to leave uh, in the cooperation? Is it that they've outgrown it? Is it that at a certain stage, uh, the community can no longer meet their needs. 
what exactly uh, is it that causes uh, countries to leave communities and how prepared are we to keep together? Uh, that is over to you, Godfrey or Henry, who can uh, you know, enlighten us about the challenges of coming together and how they are to be mitigated. Okay, in terms of the EU, okay, if we are to compare the two, CFTA and the EU, I think CFT has had the fastest and within in terms of entering the FTA. Within a period of three years, the FTA agreement was signed among the 54 member states. So meaning in terms of Africa convergence and understanding, we have a dream to unite and cooperate in terms of, in terms of trade and any other. So when you take the history of EU, EU started with the first four member states within 1958, around 1960. There were four member states. So when you see the journey of EU up to now, the EU 28, minus now the Brexit, it becomes 27. So if you are to follow the EU politics and EU debate and you bring it closer to our ESC member states, you know, some of the contentious issues that normally come within Rex, mm -hmm. like for ESC, let me begin from ESC. All industries, well, I would say all countries were homogeneous. Homogeneous in terms of we produce almost similar products. Yeah. And you find we have the same industries. So you find now, as you liberalize tariffs, you find issues coming up in terms of the non-tariff barriers because you are trying to protect your industries which seem to be homogeneous among the member states. So you find if you have sugar in Uganda, you have sugar in Kenya, you have sugar in Tanzania. So if sugar is to move freely, you will be affecting the domestic industry on the other side. So it becomes now political. Then the other issue that normally comes, like the way you see EU, it is mainly when you add in the aspect of business persons or movement of business people. Normally the issue of business people, it is a bit funny and a bit contradicting. Because you find every country, they assume business people, they normally take it to the aspect of immigration. And when you bring in issues of business people and link them with migration, now it becomes a national sovereignty issue. So countries now start thinking about their sovereignty. So you find in terms of breaking and agree, if all of us, there was like uniformity and we are developing in terms of regional value chains, where you find motor vehicles, the motor vehicle industry within the ESC, where one makes tires, another one makes engines, another one makes plastics, another one assembles them. Then there, there will be coexistence among the ESC member states. But however you find in the industries are competing against each other, then it becomes a reason for challenge for your coexistence. But now the beauty with ESC, in terms of the existing leaders we have, they are committed to the political leadership. It's committed to push our integration. And that's what has pushed the CFTA to move very fast. It came from the political leadership of our president to see that this thing works in Africa. Trying to move from the existing intra-Africa trade of around 16% to make it move to around like 25, that is the vision. But in terms of Africa contribution to global trade, it is still low. It doesn't exceed 3%. So now, if you are to make change for our people within Africa, one aspect would be, can we use trade to develop our economies? Can we use trade to eradicate poverty? Countries have used trade to push their economies out of poverty. So trade can be an engine. Yeah, thank you, Anthony. Yeah, indeed, the challenge is not with standing. It is clear that trade can be an engine to take us to the next level. We have seen uh, something that has come out from uh, Godfrey's reaction, 
uh, protection of the domestic industry. The ideal would, uh, one would think that when we agree to come together, we are saying we are, we are one. So about the protection of the domestic industry, one would also assume that if the market is open, uh, you're open to export and import and everybody wins. So uh, why does it at the end of the day become uh, a sticky issue for the countries to protect each other? We have seen that there is a, a market uh, of about 1.3 billion people in Africa, which means that there is enough for every seller out there to sell within the, within the African region. So why again does it become contentious for us to think about the domestic industry? Yes, Anthony, in terms of Okay, let us take it from, we have the national priorities, yeah. we have the national development aspirations, then we have the regional. So every, if I'm, to, if I'm to start from the national level, every country has specific problems yeah. that are specific to that country. Now you find some of the problems are cross-cutting. And one of the biggest problems we have within Africa is the unemployment of the youth. And that has become now the biggest challenge. So now the question you'd ask and see would be, we see most of our youth, all of them, they are now trying to strive, struggling to survive. And we have industries, some of them, that have managed to employ some of these youths. So as you enter in an integration regime, you have to balance in terms of your national aspirations versus your regional aspirations. So in terms of the language of negotiation, you'll have what we call the defensive interests versus the offensive interests. So defensive will be in terms of what you consider as a country that these sectors, if I put them on the table, I'll be wiped out. So if you believe they will be wiped out, then you protect them. Now, if you believe some of these interests, you find sectors that have now matured, and now they need now to go in the bigger markets. Now, this is what you will go into the offensive, saying which market should we consider now to penetrate? We already have a surplus in Uganda, now we want to sell the surplus. So you find now one of the biggest sector we have right now, if you remember the milk, the dairy sector, from 1996 to where it is now. We have seen a fundamental shift in the dairy sector now to produce over 2.5 billion liters per annum. So now we believe the dairy sector has matured. So if it has matured, now the dairy sector now starts needs to look for the outside markets. But when you look at it in terms of the employment of the dairy sector, it still employs a number of people. Now the question would be, if you open up the dairy sector, is it competitive to survive a surge of imports from the FTA? I would say within Africa, I think the dairy sector of Uganda has turned out to be now competitive. I think we are now, we may be the number one, number two in terms of competitiveness. We can compete with anyone. But now the question, would be, do we still need to protect the dairy sector? Because you find within the ESCCET, dairy sector is one of the sensitive list. But it has already much what? I give you another sector, which is sugar. Sugar, we are producing now surpluses. So if you take the analogy of sugar many years back, we are producing less than 80,000 metric tons per annum. But now where we are right now, we are over 630 metric tons. And we have a surplus which ranges between 120,000 metric tons to 150, which needs to be exported. But when you look at the two sectors, they employ so many people. So when you open them for competition, the question would be what affects competitiveness? 
there are countries that do what we call subsidies, they subsidize. So if you can't subsidize, and my colleague mentioned in terms of the trade in goods, there is an agreement, an annex which we call trade remedies. Subsidies, there are those subsidies that normally affect competitiveness in a country. You will outsell your competitors. So in terms of balancing, as a country you choose which sectors you feel are strategic to your economy in terms of employment. It should we any other either revenue generating, then you would protect them, depending on the criteria you set. Yeah, thank you again, uh, Godfrey, for that clarity and that uh, in-depth explanation of how we can still be able uh, to survive amidst uh, the, the challenges and the contradictions. Uh, it is clear that our market has, our potential has grown, our capacity to produce from the figures and the facts that have been given by Godfrey. Uh, maybe to take us back a step a little, uh, I will ask uh, Henry uh, Kualigonza to re-echo for us, what is it that the women and the small and medium scale enterprises can benefit from this arrangement of the continental free trade area? We have seen borders opening up, but someone out there might be wondering, well, the borders are opening up as an SME, where do I come in? How can I make the most of this opportunity? What does the arrangement do for me to facilitate uh, the fact that I can grow my business, I can look forward to external markets, and we all develop together? Henry. Thank you, Anthony. Like, 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 like we said, the SME normally, as a sector, they constitute around 80% of our businesses. And, 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 and that is no mean contribution to our economy, which is the reason why measures are being put in place under the continental free trade area arrangement to protect them to grow their business. We, 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 we said that uh, the biggest achievement that is coming along with the, a free trade area is reduction or elimination or call it removal of tariffs. Now, tariffs are one of the things that increase the cost of doing business, meaning removal or reduction of the same will contribute much to the growth of someone's business. Most of the businesses are actually killed by many factors among which we have taxation. People, some, some businesses will, will fail to break even if the tariffs are, are high. Now with the coordinate of free trade area, if they are removed, it means a reduction in cost. The other bit is uh, existing uh, cumbersome clearance formalities. For someone to go and trade with another country, there is this, there is this requirement. Now, under the CFT arrangement, we are agreeing to harmonize and simplify trading procedures. Just look at the electronic single window that is going or that is actually furthering the trade facilitation initiative under the coordinator of trade area. You, 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 you have someone declaring to the multiple authorities under one single platform. Other than making different submissions to different organizations who are regulating, who are involved in clearance or regulation of the same. So we, we hope that in the, in, through the reduction of cost, the reduction of the cost of doing business, people are enabled
to first of all access imports. There are things we don't do here or raw materials that these small medium enterprises need that are actually produced elsewhere. And, 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 and some of them are produced from countries that are not part of Comesa because if it's Comesa, we would say there is the Comesa arrangement that would uh, serve that purpose the ES arrangement that will serve that purpose. But now, if someone is to source items that are from a country that is outside, say from, from a West African country, and he needs to, 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 to use those inputs to manufacture items in Uganda, under the safety arrangement, they are going to be favored because they will have cheap access to those inputs. And, and, and of course, the, 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 the furthering of small business enterprises will lead to or, or to cushion us like Godfrey said that our biggest problem is unemployment. Small business enterprises since they contribute a substantial part to our economy it means they employ also a bigger part of our people. So if they are protected if they are uh, if if they are helped to grow it means you are actually expanding their employment base and this is what the african continent free trade area is doing what is bringing in the enabling of free movement to the market even when you bring it to a, a personal level you cannot break even if you are not sure of where you are going to sell if you are not sure of the processes, the procedures that you are going to go through for you to access a given market. So with harmonizing these trade provisions, with expanding the market, it means that the SMEs are having a wider spectrum. And, and, and that comes along with growth. The aspect of women, like we said, women, actually the African woman traditionally is engaged in production. And in some communities, you, are, you will be surprised that actually they are the, the, the most uh, economic engines of, 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 of their families. And as such, many are involved in, in business. But due to our history of domination, male domination, we find them very vulnerable to a lot of, uh, to, 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 uh, to a lot of disadvantages. Even at the border, if you just cross to these borders, you will find that they are more faced with the challenges than the male species that are engaged in, in, in business. So emphasizing the promotion of women in trade under the CFTA means that actually we are helping them to, to grow their incomes. And, and when you grow their incomes, because they have a chain of people that depend on them, it means you're actually helping the nation. This is in line with the emancipation, the women emancipation initiatives increase on their incomes so that they are able to, 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 they, they are, they are able to, to survive. The trade facilitation provisions of the argument focus on simplification of trade. If you go to the borders, of this country, and actually the borders of the southern countries, you will engage that small trade business is dominated mostly by women. In most cases, actually at extremes, they are the ones who will be most engaged in informal cross-border trade. And you know the disadvantages of informal trade cross-border trade. Sometimes it is also syn synonymous with the smuggling, synonymous with the tax evasion. We, 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 we shall be able to tap into their potential when we further the f trade facilitation in, in initiatives that purpose to simplify that area of business that women are engaged in. Just like in the case of small medium enterprises, their market is wider. R right now, the border at, uh, at, at the borders of uh, the, the eastern axis, where we border with Kenya, because of the preferential rates, you will actually find the level of economic empowerment of women is slightly different if you go 
to say the other borders. Much as we have, oh, we will, for example, at the, on the DRC access, yes, we, we, we agree we have the commercial arrangement where DRC is part, but because ESC seems to be at a much uh, uh, higher level of growth, you still find that the economic empowerment is better. So we, we, we hope that if we open up, we open up, they will also have access. They have access. The, 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 the market for their goods that they are engaged in will be, will be widened. And, and, and we look at also enhancing the initiative of formalizing trade. We have a lot of untapped tax potential that, that the, the arrangement under the CFTA uh, that, 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 that will be furthered under the CFTA. Mm -hmm. So the aspect of removal of tariffs really will make it affordable for women to operate through formal channels. And, and above all, like we said, it will offer them protection. Okay, uh, thank you very much for those uh, insights, Henry. Uh, from, from what our uh, international trade experts are telling us, it is very clear that there is uh, a lot at stake for us and there is plenty of opportunity. Uh, three main things that I've picked out for, for the small and medium enterprises, for the women, is one, simplified uh, trade procedures. Uh, I imagine that at the moment we go through a lot of challenges uh, when we are trading and to open up the, the market, to open up the, the procedures and make them simpler for everyone uh, is really something that can encourage more trade. And then we also see uh, the, uh, the possibility of accessing cheaper raw materials from the member states. This will go uh, a long way in encouraging production. We have seen that one of the clauses in the free trade area is the most favored nation. What this does is it puts us at an advantage when we are trading with any African country that is within the arrangement so that anytime we are trading with them the best possible terms or conditions for trade will be availed to us which uh, I believe is a very, very uh, instrumental aspect. Godfrey, do you have any other supplements or any other information for our listeners out there that we feel cannot be left out as regards the continental free trade area? Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Anthony. I think as I conclude, I would first thank URA for this opportunity because the awareness is a continuous process. And in terms of engagement, government is committed to engage and to assist our private sector to ensure they can maximize and take advantage of the opportunities that exist within the CFTA. And as we talk now, there is still outstanding work in terms of the CFTA which will be concluded hopefully by end of June. So in terms of conclusion, we shall continue engaging the private sector and our other ministries, departments and agencies to have a common position as Uganda and as we develop Uganda together. Thank you again for the opportunity. Anton Walker. Yes, uh, thanks indeed, Godfrey, for those uh, parting shots. Henry, for someone who has uh, just joined us, could you, in your parting shots, summarize what the free trade area is about, where we've come from, where we are right now, and surely where we are headed, so that um, it is never too late to catch up with what we are actually been talking about. Your parting shots, Henry. Thank you, Athande. As, as we conclude, I need to just highlight that this new kid on, on the block of the African continental free trade area is about Africa having a common 
market. A common market is underpinned with, by such advantages like reduction or no trade barriers and elimination of quotas. And this actually means that it's going to position us into the right position where our industries are cushioned, where our industries are guaranteed to access raw materials, where our industries are guaranteed of a market where to sell. Like we said, the current recent standing that puts the African population to 1.3 billion by UN shows that the African continent has a huge market potential. Right now we have a lot of commodities that we export to Europe, that we export to, 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 to Asia and China. Like, 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 like how President Moi once said that, why would we find it easier for us to export to Europe and we can't export among us ourselves in Africa. So this is the thing, this is the, this is the deal that will open up our markets. Lastly, this means that each one of us, customs officer, you engaged in trade, you a government regulator, you have what our president calls Eruvengo to carry so that you you enable the country and the population benefit from this initiative. If you're a customs officer, your work is to see how you fit within the facilitation mechanisms of the agreement. If you're a trader, your work and your vengo is to see and position yourself in a standing that enables you to have the right information. Like we said, we have a lot of information. We shall have a lot of engagements. This will not be the last. We expect that most will get acquainted with what is there to be offered. And as, as a trader, this is an opportunity for you to know and to access information and make wise investments. We, we, we were told about the tariff offers, what is sensitive, what is not sensitive. That should be able to guide us on the strategic investments. Where should I invest? Where I am guaranteed to have access to the inputs, for example, for me to use in my industry. As other government regulators, we have a stake we must be seen as promoters of business. It is one thing to have the agreement signed and ratified. It is one thing to do all this. When you have not had the rest of the organizations speak the same language, share the same vision, we shall have a disjointed and non-uniform implementation. So the thing is for them to also ensure that they have access, they should also identify the critical areas where they can be able to offer and put a building block on the CFTA. The advantage we have, like Godfrey said, is that we have the political will. If you look at the factors that have enabled the ESC to grow fast to a strong block as it is, there has always been political will. Even where there are disagreements, the political will actually guides them into proper dispute settlement. And this is the political will that we have. The highest level of political will that is being demonstrated at the African continent level is that even when it comes to discussion of some matters, they don't, ex they don't exclude that because your state has not yet ratified, then you will not take part in some decisions. If the AU Assembly is sitting, it will sit as the AU Assembly. 
And, and I think we have the political backing. Once you have the political backing, the technical man, you can implement, you can simplify processes, you can do whatever it takes to have this work. And our commitment as customs is that it must work. We can't be the reason for failing it. We already have initiatives that we are doing that are within that line. If you look at the current, the, 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 the ongoing enhancements in the customs, this, the Uganda Electronic Single Window, the one-stop border posts, the, the SCT, Electronic Cargo Platform, it, it actually furthers the, the facilitation of transit, if you look at it. If you look at the new, the, the new addition, the Warehouse Information Management System, the Auto Conversion Initiative, when you look at all of them, you, you discover that there is that bit of simplifying the cost of being the, the cost of doing business simplify customs clearance so that people have access to their products and if you fit them into the broader strategy then we, we are in the right direction the dpc that we have that actually harmonized helps us to harmonize the valuation so people people now can predict they know that i will submit my 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 my, my I, i'll bring my cargo and it will be it, 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 it will be valued properly by one single unit, not like how it was those days. You, you remember they used to say, these are values from Tukula, these are values from Malaba, these are, you would find they were varying and it would really trouble the, the, the traders. All these initiatives are actually fitting into the strategy. So the issue is how do we position ourselves in a standing that enables us to, serve, to, first of all, to further the implementation of the agreement, but also to ensure that we, we benefit from it. Yes, uh, thanks indeed, Henry. Uh, your name is Henry Ford uh, once said that if everyone is moving forward, then success will take care of itself. So we are not going to uh, move alone, but we shall move together and indeed success will take care of itself. As we conclude, the some uh, messages that came through. Enoch Chiemba says it's been a very informative session, thank you. Looking forward to the shared presentation for further review. Indeed, we are going to share the presentations. Others asking whether the presentation can be shared. Where can someone access more information, for example, opportunities? of the free trade area and the answer is the Ministry of Trade, Industry and Cooperatives. Uh, the negotiations, the arrangements are made majorly at that level so in case one is seeking information about the opportunities that uh, this arrangement presents, we can visit the Ministry of Trade and be sure that you will be uh, responded to. Uh, says I'm grateful for being on this platform. That's Sekamanya. Machumu says, uh, the, uh, good morning all from Rwanda district. Be blessed. We thank you everyone for tuning in and being part of this discussion. It has been indeed very fruitful. I am sure we have learned a thing or two about the African continental free trade area. We have been blessed to have the presence of uh, the Supervisor of International Affairs of Customs, Henry Kualigonza Bienkia. And we have also been blessed to have uh, on my right, uh, Dr. Walakira Godfrey from the Ministry of Trade in, in charge of external trade. So from the team at the URI Drift Studio, uh, I've been Anthony Tosime, your moderator for the day. And we thank you for the active participation and for following through uh, the discussions that we've had. We hope uh, you've been enriched and we look forward to the next discussion and uh, developing Uganda together. Thank you everyone and have a blessed day.